Hello and welcome to Trains and Fiatic and I'm in front of a train room door so it must mean it's a layout update but this is a slightly different layout update it's a layout update with a product review so let's go on to the title and then I'll be able to show you what's going on So this month, what have I got done? You're looking at it in front of you. I still haven't got trains running again, but I'm getting very close. There's been a lot of setup going on. So, first thing you'll notice is this box here and this box here, which are DTC concept, a Cobalt IPCB Intelligent Circuit Breaker. What we'll quickly do now is pop to a video where about I unbox them and explain them to you. The first part of this video, we're on my desk. And I've got to say a humongous thank you to DCC Concepts. Really amazing company. I paid for this one. They have sent me this one for review as I needed two of these. What are they? These are the new IP-CP Intelligent DCC Circuit Breakers. So, what, what is that? Sometimes, on your modern railway, you have a problem whereby you have accidentally sent your train through a set of points, which you shouldn't have. And that could cause a short circuit on the system. The problem that that then cause is you can't change your points back to what they should be easily. You can't send for digital commands because the system have shut down because there have been a short circuit. So you can't send the command to turn off a point, to change the direction of a point because there's a short circuit. So you can't move the train because the train is causing short circuit. So you get into an annoying leap. So this, you have your DCC system coming in there. This then go into your next, um, next uh, circuit breaker and so on. Then you have your track out there. And if you're just running it straight out of a box, that's all you need to know. The other bit you do need to know is these here. You've got 1.24 amps, 2 amps, 2.75 amp, 3.5 amp, 4, 4.54 amps and 5 amps. These are your um, trip current. So your DCC system will say what it can handle. I have actually gone for three volts when I have an ECOS which can handle five volts. Reason I have done three volts is something I uh, recommend in for instructions is to go under what your system can take. I know that my um, Block detection units need, can't go more than 3.5 volts, I mean 3.5 amps. So I have set to just 2.75, which means that this will trip before anything else trip. Why have I gone for two? I'm actually going to go for more than two. But for this part of the layout, I just need two. This one here is going to be for the um, accessory bus. And this one here is going to be for the trap bus. So, wiring. DCC system here. Then that go into my current meter. Then that go into here. 
then it go through to that one, which then go to that one. Then this one will be going to the accessories, and this one's going to be going to the um the track. Few nice features this have. For basic on this, you have your track your DCC in DCC out track out. You then have your trip current, your sensibility because for e course it's very sensitive to short circuits when your uh, Digitrack system isn't as sensitive. So you might need to adjust that but out of the box it should be good. Then you have a set and run which I'll come back to in a moment. Then you have a reset, a ESP, extension warning LED, extension reset switch. These two mean you can have this buried in your layout and then have a warning light and switch neatly displayed on your layout. This allow you to attach this to the DCC concept ESP system which I don't use. But coming back to the set reset thing. A lovely bit of magic these do is I can give these a accessory address. So by default for 200, so that will now be 201, 202. I think I need to check my labeling numbering system. And if I'm having a problem with short circuits on the accessory bus, but still want to play with the trains, I can turn that off. Or if the trains are short circuiting, I can turn the trains off and go and get the accessory going. As on a large layout, you, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you can get to the point where about you lose lose track of where about for assess where about your um short circuit is. So if you have several of these, you're having a short circuit, you can't remember, can't work out where about it is, you can turn off a section of track. If a short circuit is still going, you know where it is. So what else do we get in the pack? We get some mounting screws, so if you're mounting it, the instructions say don't tighten it too tight. And then you've got three big cable connectors. So what we'll do, we go into the train room and install these and show you them running. These should work with all DCC systems. So now I'll take you back to a few weeks ago when I installed these. And then I'll explain what they are. If this feel unplanned, it is. I realise I should really be filming this bit. So... Why have I realised I need to be filming this? As I'm about to get onto the second stage of wiring. All the track apart for uh, that bit there and that bit there now have its wires coming out. Point motors, you have got a block that side, but you won't on the other side because I'm rely I don't need to change a frog. But this point, and the same on this side, won't be working to start off with, as I haven't put the point motors in. Nothing major at the moment, but will be sorted shortly. So when we go live, we'll have this track and this track running. But why did I decide I need to start a video? That's because I'm about to start the second phase wiring. So we're having two um two districts power districts that separately powered a point uh from for controller so i'm splitting it into two 
So first is going to be points. Second is going to be for track. As you might have seen on some of my live streams and videos that if a point go, it doesn't reset. So I keep having a short there. So if I separate for track from for point, I'll be able to throw for point to for correct polarity to sort out for problems. So why do I need to start filming now? It's this little section here. This is one of the two bus bars I'm running for for this layer of a layout. This is going to be for the um, point control and then for the second one is going to be for track control. So what we have happening here is we can see that there's a wire coming from the point and going into this. This then come out onto that thick wire. So this is where about all the points feed to. They're going to be four points at the moment. They're potentially going to be more. And the reason I have done for this system is I want to be able to easily disconnect a uh, point and reconnect it or easily connect test lead, easily um, connect a voltage meter so that I can see what's ha actually happening. So what I need to do here is two parts. First of all, need to attach it to the board. Eventually, the feed wire is going to go up and underneath the next layer of the layout. But for the time being, it needs to go over a bridge and take it away. Then, all these wires are cut down to the appropriate length and feed them through the holes on my track feeding thingy what's it? These things here. So we've got inner track, middle track, outer track, and then points. Then when we get onto the sidings, we'll then have a similar system for that. So I can make this a six, a eight, a 10, easily to do in software. But by doing this, I know that all the wires going through that hole of all the outside track. So if I have a problem with the outside track, I can trap that wire there. So once I've got this installed, I'll then talk you through and show you exactly what's happening. So for main focus on this month, I've been trying to get the wiring sorted. So this is the route that everything goes. We start at our DCC command center. This is my ECOS. Then on this level, we're going to go onto a booster eventually. This will then lead us over to just down here which is my power monitoring block, block, block. This then follows this blue wire over to Spaghetti Junction. I'm calling it Spaghetti Junction, but it's all actually organized. So this power line goes in here and then pass through to that one there and stops at the moment. This here is for intelligent circuit breaker and this feed this block here which then control all the points. At the moment we've got four points and one point indicator so this goes to that wire there which then break into the left and right channels so blue and black in my case and then these go to all the point motors, to drive the point motors. Then we go over to this, which will have a cable connected to the ECOS over there, which then go to this. This is my uh, ECOS Detect, which is a 16 channel, uh, 16 channel, uh, what do you call it? 16 channel 
detection unit with four rail cons. This then connected this bus here, which then go to this. So these two get for power from for e -cos. And if I have a short circuit on for track, I can still throw for uh, the point, which I've been causing for problem. Or if I have a short circuit on for point, the track can keep on, the train can keep on going. So these two are acting as independent things. And if I find I have a train in for a complete wrong thing, I can turn off a track while I sort out for points and vice versa. This, these are set to three amps, I think they are, and very high sensitivity because the ECOS is a very sensitive to short circuits. So, for power from for ECOS coming there, go to that bus bar, then it goes to one or three wires, that one there, that one there, or that bar there. So all the blue wires come out here, all the blacks go out here, and then these go to the appropriate tracks. Blocks for the time being. About there, through to about there, that's three separate blocks. Then we've got the points, which are individual points. And then from here, around to the points down here. For aim at the moment is from when I get the track powered up again, I always want to be able to run two trains. So I still got track to change when this session of installation is done. I need to take that bit of track out and put some points in, but I'll still be able to run that track and that track. And then I'll be needing to insert a point here and a point over there so I can then start onto the helix, which will be over here. So. I'm setting up the system so that as I get further on, I'll always have trains running. Um, the ECOS detect going to the ECOS um, link, which then go to Ethernet cable through to the ECOS link wherever the ECOS is. So. I need to work out what Ethernet cable is being used for that, so I have a des designated type of Ethernet, which is just ECOS Link. As there are going to be several other products using Ethernet cable to connect, but I don't want cross. I don't want to be able to. I don't want to make mistakes with plugging the wrong Ethernet cable into the wrong thing. So, with all this information. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Next weekend we are at the Matt Cosfield Show. Uh, Wednesday is live stream. If I manage to get these wires in, we might be in here playing with trains. Otherwise, I'll be carrying on with the model. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. And a humongous thank you to DCC Concept for supplying me this one for review when I bought that one really appreciate it and thank you for all the advice you gave me i know there's other options out there but this looked like what i needed so thank you everybody and i'll see you all next time thank you very much richard